Ladies and gentlemen, welcome and good morning. I'm Lieutenant Junior Grade Jason Kingsley, Prospective Executive Officer of Cutter Benjamin Bottoms, and it is my privilege to be your Master of Ceremonies this morning. On behalf of the Vice Commandant of the United States Coast Guard, welcome them to the commissioning of Cutter Benjamin Bottoms. At this time, I ask that you please silence all electronic devices for the duration of the ceremony. Should you need medical assistance, please get the attention of an usher. Medical personnel are standing by to assist. In case of an emergency that requires evacuation, please leave all of your belongings in place and follow the instructions of law enforcement officers. Military members, please remain covered throughout the ceremony and follow my lead in rendering honors. During the national anthem, guests not in uniform, please stand facing the flag with your right hand over your heart. Veterans are invited to follow my lead in rendering hand salutes. The commissioning ceremony is one of the most important traditional milestones in the life of a cutter, as it represents her entry into active service and her readiness to conduct Coast Guard missions. This time-honored tradition dates back to the commissioning of our first revenue cutter, the Massachusetts, in 1791. Since that date, hundreds of Coast Guard cutters have undergone the transition from a silent hole to a living cutter of the fleet. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation and are ready to assume the watch. Prior to introducing our official party, I would like to introduce some distinguished guests joining us in the audience. Please hold your applause until the end. U.S. Attorney General Robert Brewer, Jr., Southern District of California. Consul General Alfredo de Escragnoli of Brazil. Consul General Maria O'Donnell Olson of Spain. Captain Tony Hahn, Chief of Staff, Coast Guard Pacific Area. Captain Joseph Bazella, Commanding Officer, Coast Guard Sector San Diego. Captain Monica Rochester, Commanding Officer, Coast Guard Sector, Los Angeles, Long Beach. Captain Dwight Collins, Commanding Officer, Maritime Security Response Team, West. Captain Roy Love, Commanding Officer, Naval Base, San Diego. Captain Brian Dixon, Commanding Officer, Naval Base, Point Loma. Captain Mike Rorstad, U.S. Coast Guard Retired, Chairman of the Commissioning Committee. Captain Luis Marquez, Mexican Navy. Command Master Chief Ryan Fulkamp, 11th District Command Master Chief, City Council members, police chiefs, members of the Distinguished Flying Cross Society, members of the Bottoms family, state, country, county, and local California partners, all active duty, reserve, and retired military officers and enlisted personnel, Coast Guard auxiliary members, our uniformed volunteer force, and finally, to our distinguished guests, congressional staff members, civil and local officials, Coast Guardsmen, fellow service members, and the family and friends and crew of the Cutter Benjamin Bottoms, thank you all for joining us on this momentous occasion. In addition, today's ceremony would not have been possible without the outstanding support and contributions of Bollinger Shipyard, L3 Technologies, the Coast Guard Foundation, the San Diego Navy League Council, and other generous donors and sponsors. The incredible support they have put into, morning, into this morning's ceremony, as well as the warm welcome they have provided here in San Diego to our crew have been second to none. Thank you. The Coast Guard Honor Guard is providing today's ceremonial detail. Additionally, Navy Band Southwest is providing today's ceremonial music. Thank you all for donating your time and talent. And finally, to our distinguished guests, congressional staff members, civil and local officials, Coast Guardsmen, fellow service members, and the family and friends of the crew of Cutter Benjamin Bottoms, Thank you all for joining us on this momentous occasion.
We have gathered here today to celebrate and honor Petty Officer Benjamin Bottoms and commission the cutter that will carry his legacy into the 21st century. Benjamin Autrell Bottoms enlisted in the United States Coast Guard October 13, 1932, and was trained at Receiving Unit New London, Connecticut. Early in 1942, Bottoms joined U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Northland to serve as a radioman first class assigned to the J2F4 Grunman amphibious plane that the cutter carried on a Greenland patrol. On November 28, 1942, a radio message notified the commanding officer that the position of a U.S. B-17 flying fortress had crashed on the ice cap near the east coast of Greenland and it had been discovered. As a radioman, Bottoms accompanied Lieutenant John Pritchard, the pilot of the cutter's plane, on the hazardous rescue flight. That same day, the Grunman J2F4, tail number 1640, took off to rescue the U.S. Army crew. Picking up weak radio signals from the bomber, Bottoms was able to give the pilot accurate bearings on the wrecked B-17. Unable to land closer to the crash site, Bottoms and Pritchard walked four miles to get to the air crew. Since that plane could only carry two airmen at a time, Bottoms and Pritchard selected, selected two injured men who could walk back to the plane with assistance, promising to return the remaining day for more people. The following day, Bottoms and Pritchard resumed rescue operations for the remaining airmen. As on the previous day, they reached the stranded airmen and successfully took off for the cutter. Soon after takeoff, the plane encountered a heavy snowstorm and crashed on the ice caps. After the storm subsided, search parties from a nearby U.S. Army base and from the ship were organized to search for the lost aircraft. A bomber sighted and identified the plane. However, rescue parties were unable to reach the plane. Benjamin Bottoms, who was 29 years old, was declared missing in action November 29, 1942. He was subsequently declared deceased one year later, November 30, 1943. For his part in this daring rescue, Bottoms was posthumously awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross. Please join me in a big round of applause in his honor. Section leader, bring the ship's company to attention. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of today's official party and remain standing for the rendering of honors, the presentation of colors, the playing of our national anthem, and the invocation. It is my pleasure to introduce the official party. Already joining us on stage, Mr. Kevin Faulkner, Mayor of San Diego. Mr. Frank Tucciaroni, long glass presenter. Mr. Skip Bowen. Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard, retired, and Vice President of Government Relations, Bollinger Shipyards. Mr. Matt Long, Program Manager, Fast Response Cutters, L3 Technologies. Lieutenant Matthew Harris, U.S. Navy Chaplain, USS Princeton, San Diego, California. Now, Ms. Michelle Yeruso, Ship Sponsor, arriving. Prospective commanding officer, Coast Guard Cutter Benjamin Bottoms, arriving. Eleventh District, arriving. Vice Commandant, arriving. <laughs> Military personnel, hand salute. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ready, two. Color guard, present the colors. And salute. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the Rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Ready, two. <laughs> Chaplain Harris will now deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of heavens and earth, the time, resources, and energy exuded in building this fine vessel are not in vain, for we commission it in your name and for your purposes. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are above nations and all other things are under your power and authority. Therefore, we set this vessel apart to do good. We pray that this ship and its crew would be filled with your Holy Spirit and have the peace to do their divinely appointed jobs given to them by you for your purposes of making lasting peace. Grant these servants and their hearts willingness and readiness to answer the call no matter the cost. We pray in sending the ship and crew to sea for their protection and well-being. Remind them of the high calling on their lives as guardians of our coast and keep them safe in restless waves. May they, O oh Lord, be found always ready to do the timely and difficult service no matter the sea state or the odds stacked against them. Allow this crew and spirit to stand on the shoulders of giants like Benjamin Bottoms and other Coast Guard heroes whose sacrificial character has made our nation great and our Coast Guard an exceptional life-giving service. God bless the guests here, especially the Bottoms family, bless the ceremony, bless the crew, the Coast Guard members, and oh Lord, bless our nation and turn our hearts towards you. We pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, Chaplain Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Mr. Kevin Faulkner, 36th Mayor of San Diego. Well, good morning. Uh, glad, uh, glad so many of you have traveled so far to be what's here in, uh, in San Diego. Um, what a proud day for our city and for our nation as we are here for the commissioning of the Coast Guard Cutter Benjamin Bottoms. Um, and it's also so wonderful to be with all of you who care so deeply about our military, our veterans, and the great city of San Diego. Before I begin, I want to acknowledge uh, Admiral Charles Ray, uh, Vice Commandant of the United States Coast Guard, Admiral Peter Gaudier, who is here, of course, from Commander 11th Coast Guard District, the crew and family of the Coast Guard Cutter Benjamin Bottoms, including Lieutenant Lenny Day, the family who is here of Radio Man First Class Benjamin Bottoms, the family of Airman Alexander Tuchery, representatives of the San Diego Navy League, Coast Guard City Executive Steering Committee, and all of the Coast Guard leadership uh, and all of my fellow elected officials who are in attendance this morning. San Diego is a very proud military city and loves and respects our servicemen and women and our veteran community. It is the fabric of who we are as San Diegans. And we are especially proud in San Diego of our long-standing relationship with the United States Coast Guard. And as one of the largest, I think, Joe, we're actually the largest because we got New York by 22 uh, miles, square miles, and the finest Coast Guard cities in the country. Uh, we're privileged and proud to be with you here today. As I think all of you know, our Coasties conduct hundreds of rescue missions along our coastline uh, each year, keeping our city, keeping our region safe and saving lives. We can never repay the brave men and women who protect our coastline. And we have the opportunity today to honor them. And that's why we are here. This beautiful cutter is one small way we can honor the service and the commitment of our great Coast Guard representatives. Radioman Benjamin Bottoms was indeed a true hero. He was a patriot who, as we just heard, disappeared over seven decades ago serving our country and saving lives off the coast of Greenland. He was just 29 years old at the time of his daring rescue, and he ended up sacrificing his life to save others. Heroic, brave, selfless. That's who Officer Benjamin Bottoms was. And I can't think of a better way to honor his legacy than with the commissioning of this state-of-the-art cutter, the newest and fastest cutter of its kind. This ship will be used for security operations at ports along the coast, as well as rescue missions worldwide. So thank you to all of you for being here to support our Coast Guard community to bringing this beautiful ship to life. On behalf of a grateful city and a very proud mayor, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Faulkner. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce our second speaker, Mr. Skip Bowen, former Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard and current Vice President of Government Relations, Bollinger Shipyard. Good morning, folks. Admiral Ray, Admiral Gaudier, Mr. Mayor, FRC crew families and friends of the Bottoms, and especially our Cutter sponsor, Ms. Michelle Yerusso. It is a pleasure to be here with you this morning. On behalf of Ben Bordelon and the men and women of Bollinger sh uh, Shipyards, greetings from Cajun Cutter Country in southwest Louisiana. It is an honor to be here in San Diego this morning to help celebrate the commissioning of the Coast Guard's newest and fastest fast response cutter. Bollinger Shipyards is celebrating 35 years of committed service to our U.S. Coast Guard. Our company enjoys the longest standing shipbuilder customer relationship in modern American shipbuilding history. We are proud of this enduring association, which began with the construction of the very first 
Island-class 110-foot patrol vessel, the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Farallon. My personal journey with Bollinger Shipyards started with the Farallon. In early 1986, I was assigned to the Cutter shortly after she was commissioned. At the time, the Farallon represented this huge step forward in capability for the Coast Guard, particularly in the counter-narcotics mission. I remember marveling as the new Cutter smoothly cut through the ocean at 30 knots. Targets of interest that had easily outrun us on older cutters were caught, and let me tell you, it was exhilarating. And then 11 years later, I was assigned as the plank owner, officer in charge of the Coast Guard's second Bollinger-built 87-foot patrol boat, the Coast Guard Cutter Hammerhead, which, by the way, was the last of the really cool names of the 87s, just saying. After delivery and a very rough transit across the Gulf of Mexico on the heels of a hurricane, we arrived in Key West, where upon tying up at the base, my fellow commanding officers and officers in charge of the older cutters that were there were envious of the huge bridge, C4 suite, stern launch, and all, all of those things showcasing another major upgrade in Coast Guard mission effectiveness. The hammerhead represented the beginning of what would become over time a 74-vessel fleet of extremely capable cutters all built by Bollinger Shipyards. So in 2011, almost a year after I retired from the Coast Guard, I left at the chance to join the Bollinger team working on the fast response cutters. If the 110s and the 87s in their time represented huge steps forward for Coast Guard operations, the current 154-foot fast response cutter fleet represents progress that is magnitudes above those benchmarks. I am beyond proud to work for a company who takes the time to fully understand our customers' needs and create such outstanding products. The 600 men and women who built this cutter maintain a laser, work, laser focus on workmanship, quality, safety, and protecting the environment. This extreme focus has resulted in zero production discrepancies at delivery for almost all of the fast response cutters delivered over the past three years. This level of quality is absolutely unheard of in the shipbuilding industry. It is a total testament to all of the workers at Bollinger Shipyards who created this masterpiece out here on the dock. So don't take my word for it. After the ceremony, take a tour and talk to the crew. You won't fail to be impressed. Before I finish, I would like to invite Ms. Michelle to the podium. Ship sponsors play a special part in every commissioning and in the life of the ship. My, only, my wife, Janet, was actually the sponsor of the Coast Guard Cutter Sea Fox when it was commissioned. As the sponsor of the Benjamin Bottoms, his great niece, Ms. Michelle Yerusso, will ensure that Benjamin's continued legacy of leadership and sacrifice will guide the vessel's crew in all of these years to come. Ms. Michelle? On behalf of Bollinger Shipyard, I'd like to present this token of our appreciation for you being the sponsor. Thank you. Thank you again for the opportunity to be here. To the crew, fair winds and following seas, and know that when those winds pick up and the seas get rough, and believe me, I've been there. You and your families can be confident that you're on the finest, most seaworthy vessel that can be built. God bless you in all your future journeys. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Matt Long, Program Manager of Fast Response Cutters for L3 Technologies. Thank you. The, uh, the men and women of L3 Technologies are proud to be part of the Coast Guard and Bollinger team that brings these wonderful cutters to life. At L3, we're committed to providing game-changing C4 ISR systems that enable these cutters to have significant operational advantages as the crew performs their day-to-day -day missions. At each commissioning, L3 creates a commemorative poster honoring the heroism of each cutter's namesake. These posters will be available for you at the end of the ceremony, and I encourage each and every one of you to take one with you. At this time, I have the distinct honor to also introduce the Coast Guard Foundation. 
The Coast Guard Foundation creates and executes programs that enrich the lives of the Coast Guard service members. It empowers and educates Coast Guard families, and it provides critical support during times of injury and loss. And along those lines, I'd like to request Tom Weatherall, biz, uh, excuse me, uh, Director of Business Development and Strategic Planning for General Dynamics NASCO to join Lieutenant Day on the stage. Tom has the distinct privilege to present Lieutenant Day with a check for $8,000 for the ship's morale fund. This check was made possible by General Dynamics NASCO, Tom Weatherald himself, and Sidney Miller. And lastly, on behalf of the Coast Guard Foundation, the American Legion, and L3 Technologies, I just want to wish you, Lieutenant, the crew, and all of their families, the best wishes and the very best in your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce the 11th Coast Guard District Commander, Rear Admiral Peter Godier. Mr. Mayor, Vice Commandant, distinguished guests, colleagues, friends and family of the Coast Guard, let me add my warm welcome on this cool San Diego morning to you all here in the audience. Um, thank you for being here today to help us commission this incredible cutter and to honor the legacy of a Coast Guard hero from the greatest generation, Radium and First Class Benjamin Bottoms. Coast Guard Cutter Benjamin Bottoms is the last of four fast response cutters that are going to be home ported here in Coast Guard District 11, just north of here in San Pedro, California. As a District 11 commander, I have to tell you, I am just as excited to commission this fourth cutter as I was to commission the first fast response cutter here on the West Coast back in November. The District 11 area of responsibility includes an expansive stretch of ocean from the California-Oregon border down to here to the U.S.-Mexican border and further south to the international waters off of Mexico Central America and South America. This cutter will perform a full set of Coast Guard missions in the waters off of California and to the south. But unlike any other class of Coast Guard patrol boat, the Coast Guard cutter Benjamin Bottoms will operate with capabilities we've never had before, allowing us to employ her in a way we've never operated any previous class of Coast Guard patrol boat before. In an era of fast-changing technology that we live in, the ship before you is simply put a leap in Coast Guard capability. With a top speed of over 30 miles per hour, it's faster and can get on scene sooner than any other patrol boat that came before it. It has longer endurance and better sea-keeping ability, making the Coast Guard better able to respond to cases farther offshore and in worse weather, and it has a state-of-the-art communications and sensor suite linking our command centers, aircraft, and partner ships and planes to vastly improve our knowledge of what's happening out there on the high seas. This cutter will keep us ready. We'll be better at rescuing mariners in distress, protecting our precious fisheries and natural resources, and guarding our maritime borders. We will remain relevant to the needs of this region, and will be more effective in keeping our waterways safe and secure like right here in the Port of San Diego, where we safeguard critical military infrastructure and facilitate commerce worth over $9.4 billion each year. And this cutter will be responsive to natural disasters, spills, oil spills, drug and human smuggling. The crew standing to my left has undergone extensive training and has rigorously prepared the cutter to conduct Coast Guard operations. They've made a long journey, as Master Chief Bowen said, from down by you where steel was cut uh, in the shipyard in Lockport, Louisiana, over to Florida where they spent several months in Key West doing workups, training, ready for operations, weapons testing, and really coming together as a team. 
From there, they sailed through the Panama Canal uh, and sailed up the west coast of Central America, Mexico, and then finally here uh, to San Diego. Oh, and by the way, they earn, earned the coveted order of the ditch when they passed through the Panama Canal. <laughs> and they also dodged hundreds of sea turtles west of Golfito in Costa Rica as they steamed, uh, steamed uh, north to, to be with you here today. It was a lot of work, but some adventure as well. So thank you to the officers and crew of the Benjamin Bottoms for your tremendous work to bring the ship into commission today. We're expecting great things from you as you join Coast Guard District 11. And so are the people of this region that you'll serve. Captain Rochester, the commanding officer of Sector Los Angeles Long Beach, where this will be home ported, and her crew, and the District 11 staff and I up in Alameda are standing by to help you be successful in any way that we can, and I have no doubt that you will. I have no doubt that this capable cutter and motivated crew will live up to our expectations and their new cutter's motto, honor, commitment, and sacrifice. Semper Paratus. Thank you, Rear Admiral Godier. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my distinct honor to introduce Admiral Charles Ray, 31st Vice Commandant, United States Coast Guard, and today's presiding official. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? I'm doing well myself. I had a temporary reprieve from Washington, D.C., no place I'd rather be than right here, right now with you all. It is a, it's a pleasure to be here with all of our active duty folks, our retired folks, our veterans, our family members, auxiliarists out here helping to put this program on. Captain Bazell, I want to thank you for what you and your crew have done to put on one of these commissioning events of this magnitude and this importance, no small feat, and uh, appreciate what you've done, Joe. Great job. I um, also want to put out a special thanks. We've got, of course, Mr. Mayor, thank you for hosting this and for what you do as a Coast Guard City. I want to thank our new U.S. Attorney, Mr. Robert Brewer, Jr. And then we've got a special guest here in the audience. Uh, if you would, I'd like for you, Bernie, to stand up, please. We have with us pharmacists made first class Bernie Trifoso, World War. We're going to talk about Benjamin Bottoms. I'm going to talk a little bit about him and the relevance today. But this is a this is a man who served in the same time. And when we went ashore in Normandy, Mr. Trifoso was there. And then he went home for six months leave, and that didn't turn out. He actually got about six days leave, and then he shipped out to Okinawa. And so he has served and protected our country, and, and he's really got a lot going on right now, too. I'll tell you, if you get a chance to talk to him, it's a treat. So, Bernie, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. We also have many members of our Distinguished Flying Cross Society, and uh, as you all may know, or if you don't, it's in your program, but Benjamin Bottoms earned the Distinguished Flying Cross along with Lieutenant Pritchard for their service that day on the ice cap in Greenland, well-deserved. And uh, there are members here uh, living that are in that same society. They share a common bond, and we thank you all for being here today. God bless you. Thank you for being here. I want to thank Michelle Yerusso for and the entire Bottoms family for being here. Thank you for this tie that joins us with your family. It is really important, as the Mass Chief said, this, the role of being a sponsor is something that we hold dear in our service, and it means you're always part of this crew as, as, as long as this ship is in service. And I want to welcome Mr. Frank Tucciarone today. He'll be our long last presenter, and you'll hear a little bit more about him. But it is, uh, I talked with Frank last night, and his grandfather is the one that Benjamin Bottoms helped rescue in the first day on the 28th of November and removed from that Greenland ice cap. And I think it's pretty safe to say Frank wouldn't be here today if it were not for what uh, Mr. Our Petty Officer Bottoms had done. So Frank, thank you. And Frank told me that his grandfather told him when he was young and reminded the family 
throughout as long as he lived of what an honor it was to have served and what a debt they owed to the Bottoms family. So thank you all. Thank you, Frank, for being here. I want to thank Mike Rorstadt. Mike, you have headed up this committee. And thank you. Please stand up. And Mike is the commissioning committee, Coast Guard retired. Mike, you've done a wonderful job. Thank you. I want to thank Mass Chief Bowen. Uh, first of all, Mass Chief, we gave you a good long time for a commercial break there for Bollinger. Good job. Uh, but, but in all seriousness, I've known Mass Chief Bowen for many years. He is Coast Guard blue through and through. He loves every woman and man in the Coast Guard, and he holds this crew near and dear to his heart. And I mean, and what he says, uh, when you think about what he's got in the game, in the Coast Guard, in his life of service and his dedication to these ships, we're in good hands. And, and uh, I endorse his statement. Um, secondly, Matt, thank you for representing L3 and for all the folks from the Coast Guard Foundation. Thank you, Tom, for coming up and uh, presenting. Uh, the check to the crew. Uh, these systems, every man on this crew will learn how to operate these systems. I was talking to Matt and every woman, they will. These systems are inherent to how we operate now and, and you guys have done a great job delivering. And Lenny, that check, I need to be invited back when you have the ship's party for that. <laughs> uh, these commissioning ceremonies are important events in our service. They're important for a number of reasons. First and foremost, we're bringing new capability to the fleet. We're going to do everything Admiral Godier said we're going to do and more. And, uh, and we don't get many new things in the Coast Guard. So when we get new things, we like to take time and celebrate. It's a big deal. <laughs> and we've been commissioning ships since 1791. And so these ceremonies, every part of them as a part of our tradition and, and, and the way these rolls out and what we do here with the crew and the things you'll observe today, they're all part of the fabric of the Coast Guard. And, and there's something we're very proud of and they all have meaning. And this ship, as was said, it will sail for arguably the next 30 years. I'm pretty, pretty sure of that. We take good care. We've got great folks to take care of our ships and, and boats and aircraft, and, and we take great pride in them, so she'll be around. And over the course of that time, I don't know how many lives they'll save, but they'll save dozens, if not scores of lives. This crew, this cutter, and those that follow them. Uh, they will protect our border. They will enforce our laws, and, and they will do all, any number of enforcement activities, from narcotics uh, to fisheries enforcement to taking care of the, the environment that is here in California. And when needed, they will sail alongside other military services and go in harm's way. We've been doing that for about 200 years as well. And so this cutter will do all that and more. Equally important, I think really the important thing today to focus on this cutter will serve as a crucible for the young women and men in the Coast Guard. They will take their first trip at sea, many of them will, in this cutter. And they, this will serve as that steel that will sharpen them as they go on and lead our service in other places all around the country and all around the world. These Coast Guard men and women are the strength of our service. And as much as I love cutters and aircraft and boats, those will come and those will go. The strength of the service are these folks right here and those you see in the uniform standing behind you, and those that have served before. And so it is altogether fitting that we take time and we talk about honoring the service of Radium and First Class Benjamin Bottoms, because he was of the same fabric as these are. He's part of that long blue line that makes up the Coast Guard. And so what I'd ask, what I'll just talk about briefly is if you look in your program, there's a ship seal that goes with Benjamin Bottoms. And, and, and in there is listed, and, and Admiral Godier mentioned it, They're, they have a motto. And it's called, and it refers to honor, commitment, and sacrifice. And so those are interesting words if you're just talking about history, but those words are important today. In the Coast Guard, when we put words on buildings and we put words on our ships, they mean something. And they're things that we hold ourselves to. When we talk about honor today, we are talking about honoring the courage of Radium and First Class Benjamin Bottoms as an example that we all would aspire to live up to. And I just got to talk about this a little bit. They, they were operating in Greenland in 1942. This was at, at the, really at the crux of the War of the North Atlantic. There was not a more dangerous place on the planet 
than the North Atlantic and the coast of Greenland, off of there. At the time, the Benjamin Bottoms, the crew of Northland, and Lieutenant Pritchard served up there. And they were flying over the Greenland ice cap. But if you've never flown in the far north, it's everything's gray. The ice cap's gray, the sky's gray, the sea's gray, and it is so hard to do what they did, especially given the navigation equipment they had and the equipment they had. It is just, it, it's hard to describe how dangerous that was. And if you've not read the story, they went there the day before on the 28th of November, and they did the first ever landing of an amphibious aircraft on the ice cap. They land on there, and they, okay, we made this. And I could just imagine what went through their mind. And then they hiked about, it, it, the history varies exactly. Well, let's say it's over a couple miles. And that's not like walking a couple miles here. They had a broomstick and they're walking on a glacier. If you've never been on a glacier, there's crevasses. And you can literally step in that and fall a thousand feet to your death. And it, it happens quite often for people that operate in that kind of stuff. And so they had a broomstick. That's what they had for their special equipment. And they walked along, Petty Officer Bottoms and Lieutenant Pritchard, and they plugged their way and stepped over crevasses. They made their way to the site of the B-17 crash, and they pulled two of those men off. One of them was the grandfather of Frank up here. And then they had to turn the airplane around, and they raised the wheels up and got them up, and they slid it like a big sled down off of that glacier and took off flying back. But this time it's dark. In November, you only get about five hours of daylight up in Greenland. And, and they flew back to the ship, and the ship had to shine a spotlight for them to be able to land on the water and get them. And when I think about courage, I think about them hitting the rack that night, because they told those guys they were coming back to get them. And what was that like to lay in that rack thinking, oh my goodness, what have I signed up for to go do? And that courage is what we honor, and that's why this ship was named after Benjamin Bottoms. And as you all know, they did go back. And, and we all know what happened with the rest of the story there. The second word on their motto is commitment. And uh, I will tell you that Petty Officer Bottoms and all those folks that served along with Bernie and his, the thousands and thousands of people that protected free nations of the world from tyranny, uh, the commitment they had to their mission. And, and Petty Officer Bottoms, he, he didn't just join when the war came. He had been in the Coast Guard for 10 years before the war came. He was a professional Coast Guardsman committed to his mission. He knew what he was about. And he served in several cutters up and down the coast. And when he, there couldn't have been a more committed, dedicated professional Coast Guardsman than Petty Officer Bottoms that evening. And I will tell you that that same commitment is embodied by the crews we have today and by these folks right here. That same commitment is required for the missions we have today. We're not in the middle of the Great World War, but it's, it's often equally dangerous where we send these folks to serve. And that kind of commitment is what we hold up is, is what you've got to have if you're going to do what we do in the Coast Guard these days. You got to be you got to push everything else out of the way, and you got to focus on the mission at hand. And that's what these folks will do. The last word of their motto is sacrifice. Now, Petty Officer Bottoms made the ultimate sacrifice, and don't want to steal any thunder from the chaplain, but we all know what the Good Book says about no greater love hath a man than he give up his life for someone else. And Petty Officer Bottoms did that. And he knew when he got up that morning that could have been one of the things that would happen to him that day. And I'll tell you, going to sea, taking off in aircraft, taking off in helicopters like that has not gotten any less dangerous than it was in the conditions that we fly and sail and operate in. And while we train and work hard to lower the risk of that, that's part of raising your right hand and saying you're going to serve your country and serve the people in your country. And so. I hope that we never have to have anybody from Benjamin Bottoms make that ultimate sacrifice, but that's, that's part of the contract we make with you all when we put on this uniform. And they know that, and yet they keep some serving. Finest daughters and sons in America keep coming to the Coast Guard and raising their right hand to serve, knowing of the sacrifice they have to make. And it's not just physical danger sacrifice. There's a lot of daily sacrifice in being a Coast Guardsman. When they join our service, they agree to serve to a adhere to a higher standard. We have a code that we celebrate the 25th year anniversary, honor, respect, and devotion to do. And every one of these young women and men understand what that means, that they can't just do what everybody else does. They have to hold themselves to higher standards, and that's what they do. And then finally, there's personal sacrifice for their families. As was said, Lieutenant Day led this crew on this several-month journey, 
and they've been scattered all over the country and their families been having to settle their houses here and get jobs and figure out where they're going to live and that's part of Coast Guard life. That's what we do. That's what they do. That's what our families do. They make that sacrifice and that goes on day in and day out. Honor, commitment, sacrifice. These are more than just words on that ship's seal. These are words that the Coast Guardsmen today live by and that we hope to emulate the very best of what Petty Officer Bottoms demonstrated with his all too short life of service. To the families of Petty Officer Bottoms, I want you to know that your loved one will never be forgotten. All who serve in or around this cutter will learn of his story and learn about his sacrifice. And I say this with confidence because I know this commanding officer and I know these folks. I don't know them personally, but I know Coast Guard folks like them, and I know that this is important to them and they hold this dear. Today marks the day that Lieutenant Lenny Day and the fine crew of Benjamin Bottoms will take the torch and carry forth the honor of your loved one. They'll write the next chapter in the legacy of Benjamin Bottoms. This chapter will come with challenges and uncertainties and require that each of you be women and men of Benjamin Bottoms' caliber. I congratulate you all on this tremendous opportunity. I thank you all for being here to share this day with us, this important day in the Coast Guard. God bless you all. God bless the United States of America. Semper Paratus. Thank you, Admiral Ray. Ladies and gentlemen, Cutter Benjamin Bottoms, Prospective Commanding Officer, Lieutenant Lenny Day. I would like to ask Master Chief Kit Harris, U.S. Coast Guard Silver Agent Albatross, to please join me on the stage. Master Chief Harris will be present and hoist the Cutter's Commissioning Pennant for use in today's ceremony. Master Chief Harris will be assisted by Petty Officer Tyrell in raising the colors and commissioning pennant. Master Chief Harris is the 11th Silver Ancient Albatross. The enlisted Ancient Albatross was established in 1988 for enlisted crew air, air crew member with their earliest graduation date from a Coast Guard Class A Aviation Rating School. The award recipient is the embodiment of the dedication and professionalism associated with the long service to the Coast Guard aviation, much like Redman First Class Benjamin Bottoms. Mess Chief Harris assumed the mantle of Silver Ancient Albatross on 14 July 2017. Amore, I'd be honored if you join me at the podium to place Benjamin Bottoms in commission. For the president, I place Cutter Benjamin Bottoms in the commission. May God guide her and her crew in the long years of service. So, hoist the colors and the commissioning pennant. All right, Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the cutter as we hoist the colors and commissioning pennant. Petty Officer Tyrell, hoist the colors and commissioning pennant. Captain, the colors and commissioning pennant are flying over United States Coast Guard Cutter Captain, Benjamin Bottoms. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
Lieutenant Lenny Day will now read his orders. From Commander, Coast Guard, Personnel Command, to Lieutenant Lenny Day, United States Coast Guard, subject, official orders. When directed, proceed and report to pre-commissioning unit Benjamin Bottoms for duty in conjunction and outfitting and delivery. Upon commissioning Coast Guard Colonel Benjamin Bottoms, assume the duty of commanding officer. Break the Admiral's flag. Aye, Captain. Petty Officer Tyrell, break the Admiral's flag. Captain, the Admiral's flag is flying over Coast Guard Cutter Benjamin Bottoms. Very well. Like so, set the first watch. Aye, aye, Captain. Mr. Tucciaroni, would you please step forward? When the watch is set on a new ship, the presentation of a ceremonial long glass signifies the assumption of command of the officers of the DEX Authority as the commanding officer's direct representative. Mr. Frank Tucciaroni, the grandson of U.S. Army Air Corps Private Al Tucciaroni, one of the members rescued by Radioman First Class Benjamin Bottoms and Lieutenant John Pritchard, will present the long glass for U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Benjamin Bottoms. Today, Mr. Tucciaroni will assist in setting the first watch by passing the long glass to our first officer of the deck, Petty Officer Murray. Officer of the deck, set the first watch. We are honored to have Miss Michelle Yerusa with us today, the great niece of Benjamin Bottoms and our Cutter sponsor. The notion of a Cutter sponsor is deeply rooted in naval tradition, with the woman selected for each new Cutter based on his namesake or planned mission. Sponsors today play an important role in the life of a new Cutter, maintaining a relationship with the crew, participating in ceremonies such as this one today. Ms. Yerusso, I will be honored if you join me and give the order to the crew to bring her to life. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> It is a tremendous privilege to be granted the sponsorship of the new Coast Guard Cutter, Benjamin Bottoms, named in honor of my great uncle. The Bottoms family is deeply touched by this incredible honor. I am very glad that there are Bottoms family members and friends here to share this very special day. There are also family members and close friends who wish that they, that they could have been here, but they were unable to make the trip. 
To everyone present, you all have my sincerest thanks and that of the Bottoms family for being here. Thank you, everyone. Much of what I know about my great uncle Benjamin, I learned from my uncle Bob, Robert Bowden. Uncle Bob is my father's fraternal twin. My grandfather, Harold Cooper Bowden, was married to Benjamin's twin sister, Nancy Janelle Bottoms. When I was young, I vividly recall going to Georgia during the summer for a number of years to stay with my grandmother, Nancy, but I called her Grandma B. Grandma B was a dear lady, and it was always such a pleasure to spend time with her. And she made a really good root beer float, too. <laughs> Great Uncle Benjamin had one younger sister as well, Shirley Eleanor Bottoms. However, I never knew her. This ceremony has given me the distinct pleasure to meet for the first time Great Uncle Benjamin's stepson, Mr. Ed Richardson. Sir, you have, your being here has greatly added to the ceremony. Thank you. If my great uncle were alive, he would surely be so humbled to be, such, to be given such an honor. He would also have said that his actions on Greenland in 1942 were not heroic, but simply a reflection of the Coast Guard's long tradition of life-saving missions and of putting others before oneself. There were many others that day, including, John, including excuse me, Lieutenant John Pritchard, Jr. and his other shipmates that put their, themselves in harm's way to help their fellow servicemen. Every day, members of the Coast Guard perform acts of heroism and self-sacrifice without a thought of receiving special recognition. So I accept this honor of participating in this all-important ceremony, not only on behalf of my great uncle, but also on the behalf of the other Coast Guard men and women who have stepped forward without hesitation to place the needs of others and our country before themselves. May God's guiding hand and special blessings be with Lieutenant Day and, his, and, and this crew as they accept charge of this new vessel and embark upon their important mission in the waters off of California's coast and beyond. I know my great uncle I know my great uncle will be looking down with pride each time Benjamin Bottoms goes to sea <clears throat> and that his spirit will be with this crew and all crews which will serve aboard in the years to come. Lieutenant Day, please join me at the podium. Oh, there you are. <laughs> please accept this frame gift as a symbol of my sponsorship of the United States Coast Guard Cutter, Benjamin Bottoms. Admiral Ray, sir. I thank you and the United States Coast Guard for the special honor granting me the sponsorship of the, United, of the Coast Guard's newest cutter, Benjamin Bottoms. Lieutenant Day, a special thanks to you and your crew for making me and all the other Bottoms family members present today feel like family. I also want to thank all the Coast Guard personnel, the commissioning committee, Bollinger Shipyards, L3 Technologies, the Coast Guard Foundation, and so many others that work so hard to make this ceremony so special. One that will be remembered forever. I can hear my great uncle saying, a job well done by all. I also want to publicly thank the author of the amazing book, Frozen in Time, Boston University professor Mitchell Zuckoff. This book is an in-depth true story about daring rescue missions, rescue missions that took place on Greenland during World War II, including the mission that ended tragically for great uncle, uncle Benjamin, Lieutenant Richard Pritchard Jr. and Army Air Corps Radioman Corporal Lauren Howarth. Mr. Frank Tuccheroni, there are not words to adequately express how greatly your participation has added to the significance of the ceremony today. 
It has been such a great pleasure to meet you, your, your lovely wife, Diane, your son, Alexander, and daughter, Gemma. You have my sincerest thanks. Please give your father, sister, and aunt my heartfelt regards as I wish that they could have made the trip here with us. As I end remar my remarks, I must mention again how deeply touched I am to, re to represent the Bottoms family here today and those that were, and those that were unable to join us. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Officers and crew of the Coast Guard Benjamin Butter, excuse me, Benjamin Bottoms, lay aboard and bring our cutter to life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment when Coast Guard Cutter Benjamin Bottoms officially joins the fleet. Will the audience please rise for the playing of Semper Paratus? <laughs> Company, hand salute. Captain, Ms. Russo, the ship is manned and brought to life. Ship's company, ready to? Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Lieutenant Lenny Day will now report for duty.
Officer, Coast Guard Cutter Benjamin Bottoms. Active and retired flags, captains, senior enlisted veterans, thank you for attending today's ceremony. It's an honor to be here. I'm overwhelmed, excited for representing the Coast Guard Cutter Benjamin Bottoms. My remarks will be filled with thank yous and rightfully slow, and they say it takes a village, and that is the effort that it took to bring this cutter from a hunk of steel in the Bayou of Louisiana to the shores of California. First, I'd like to thank Admiral Ray and Donna for being here. It's an honor to have you here, sir, and thank you for your continued leadership, moving the service forward into the future. To Admiral Godier, thanks for your continued support, sir. We can't wait to get to work in the 11th Coast Guard District. Also, I'd like to thank uh, Captain Bazella for your use, for letting us use your sector for the venue for this commissioning. Also, to the commissioning team, the Lieutenant Commander Gerald Hitzel and Lieutenant JG Stasi Elise, uh, Ellis, excuse me, all the, and all the others who have planned this great event. This has been an exceptional ceremony. Thank you for all the hard work behind the scenes to make this ceremony a success. I'd like to thank former Mass Chief Pay Officer Coast Guard Skip Bowen for representing Bollinger Shipyards and also the, trend, the Chan team. Um, their vision statement simply says, first to the call, Bollinger has been doing this for many years. We built our 87s and our 110s, and thanks for uh, providing us with a ship that is second to none. I'd like to thank also L3 Technologies, Matt Long, for providing us with a state-of-the-art communication suite with multi-agency communication and redundancy, which allows us to do the our job at a high level. Also, I would like to thank Commander Davis um, from Coast Guard Pro Lock Court and the PCAF team in Louisiana for the guidance and coordination as our crew was initially assembled in November. Also, I'd like to thank Captain Robert Grant. I'm not sure if you're here today, but he's been with the commission and helping out with the commission since 2012, and his dedication to the crew is much appreciated. The road to the commission has not been easy for the crew. They have endured a tremendous amount of training, starting with two months of factory training in Bollinger Shipyard in Lockport, Louisiana. And upon completion, immediately reporting to Key West for another two months of training, inspections, outfitting, and damage control training. This all culminated with a 25-day transit from Key West, Florida to, to San Pedro, California, through the Panama Canal. And none of this is impossible, if possible without the support of our home team, which is the families of the crew. So the spouses of the crew, please stand and be recognized. This was, a, this was a team effort, and I thank you for lending the Coast Guard and me, your loved ones, to prepare the ship for service. Our crew is following the footsteps of Coast Guard enlisted heroes. What if I told you that someone you never met will save your life or will risk it all to save yours? That's exactly what our enlisted heroes did. Like Kathleen Moore, name of our ninth fast response color cutter, she served as the head life housekeeper at Black Rock Harbor Light in Connecticut for 72 years, credited for saving 21 lives before she retired, many on just a rowboat. Also, the Forest Retinar, named for the first fast response cutter on Porter here in California. During World War II, the attack of the SS Dorchester by German U boats, Retinar, known as a retriever on the Coastal Cutter Escanaba was lured into the icy waters of the North Atlantic and helped survivors to life rafts. The retrievers were credited for saving 145 lives. Also, the Robert Waters, our second fast response cutter stationed in California, served. He served as a boat coxswain on a landing craft 
for the first wave of Operation Overload, a component of an invasion of Normandy during World War II. After safely landing troops on the beach, he observed stranded crew members, two from other landing crafts who were, were boats were destroyed. And under heavy fire, Ward retrieved and returned them safely to their, his ship. Also, the Terrell Horn, named for the third fast response cutter in California, while on a boarding team investigating a vessel suspected of drug smuggling, the smuggling vessel changed course and directly turned towards the boarding team small boat. Before impact, to save his crew member, Horn pushed the crew member out of the way from the collision and saved his shipmate, absorbing the impact and later succumbing to his injuries. In the story of Benjamin Bottoms, when the Northland received a radio signal that there was a downed B-70 flying force down on a Greenland ice cap, cap there was no second thought of whether him and Lieutenant Pritchard were going to save them. Their air pontoon plane was craned over into the water, and they took flight with hope and a determined spirit. When they finally found a place to land on the ice cap, it was said their wheels sank down into the snow. They walked for several miles, a couple of hours, through vigorous terrain, crevices between them and their destination. When they finally reached the B-17, it was said the survivors cheered. They assessed the crash and brought back two of the survivors who could walk and had the energy to endure the terrain. When they departed, they lifted their wheels, just using their pontoons to support. They safely returned to the Northland where survivors were, were medically treated and departed the following morning to do it again. After re uh, re reaching the crash site, they recovered another survivor and attempted to return to Northland, but during takeoff, they endured heavy weather, and the Northland lost co communication with the Grumman 10 minutes after departing the ice cap. In February of 1943, about two months or so, Sergeant Perrier, one of the crew members of the Benjamin Bobbin, writes to his parents in Georgia. Dear Mr. and Mr. Mr. Bottoms, I am somewhat at a loss in trying to write this letter because I hardly know what to say. I hope that in some way you find a little condolence in what I have to say. I am one of the boys whose life was saved through the heroic actions of your son, Benjamin Bottoms, and Lieutenant Pritchard, two braver men I've never seen. I know your son only a short while, and I never seen him until the day of the rescue. He was more than willing to go the limit to save our lives, even endangering his own. He practically dragged the two of us from, from where rescue four miles to a rescue plane. We were so nearly frozen that we slumped into the snow and wanted to be left there, but he wouldn't let us lie there only a few minutes and then trudge on a little further with us. I never forgot how he looked with his long red whiskers nor I will ever forget his nickname, Georgia. I was in the hospital for about two and a half months, but I'm back now in my home enjoying the furlough with my two sisters, Pearl and Marshy, thanks to the two swell guys whose memory will live with me forever. I can't find the words to express my admiration and gratitude for your son. I know that you, his mother, even in the hour of sorrow, must be very, very Proud of him. Signed, gratefully, Sergeant Lloyd Perrier, Camusville, Kentucky. The Benjamin Bottom story has joined the great company as enlisted unmasked heroes. Stories are continuing to be told in the Coast Guard history and American history. Benjamin Bottom's actions that day in November of 1942 is one that's comprised of honor he had for his country, the commitment to the mission and a sacrifice to put his life on the line to save others. His legacy left a lasting impression with us, where his me became we, we the Coast Guard, we the crew. The crew has been entrusted to, and to continue the legacy and carry the torch of Benjamin Bottoms, and they stand ready. Whether we're serving off the coast of San Francisco or near the coast of San Diego or calling to the transit zone of the Eastern Pacific, we stand ready. 
So when you see that gleaming white cutter with the red Coast Guard racing stripe on the horizon with Benjamin Bottom on the stern, you can rest easy. The Benjamin Bottom's crew are on the way. Thank you, and Simple Paradis. Ms. Yeruso, would you please join me at the podium? Ms. Yeruso, on the behalf of the officers and crew of the Benjamin Bottoms, I present you with this framed gift and appreciation of your support. for the benediction. Let us pray. As we prepare to close, we lift our hearts for those standing watch around the world today, those missing in action, and especially those deployed in harm's way. Bring them back safely soon, O oh Lord, to family and friends. Allow this crew to have a sweet reunion with the family and friends they have missed and longed for so much in this period of pre-commissioning. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good rapport, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Remember this, that these three remain, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Now go in peace to love God, to serve our great nation, and to serve one another. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Please remain standing for the departure of the official party. Now, Vice Commandant departing. Eleventh District departing. Benjamin Bottoms departing. Ship sponsor departing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. You are now cordially invited to reception hosted by the Commissioning Committee, Bollinger Shipyard. L3 Technologies, and a number of other generous donors. The reception will be held at the hangar to your right. Please follow the directions of our ushers. In approximately 20 minutes, we will have the honor of viewing a performance by the Coast Guard drill team. After the performance, we will begin bringing guests from the reception area on board the cutter for tours. Announcement for tours and the performance will be made at the reception. On behalf of the Vice Commandant of the Coast Guard and the plank odor crew of Coast Guard Cutter Benjamin Bottoms, Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> Ship's company dismissed.